Welcome to Raiders of the Lost Art, episode 16. My name is Finbar, and this is the rise of the musicpreneur, featuring my good buddy, Ron Bloom. You know, we're at episode 16, and we've covered a lot of stuff so far. Uh, decoding music, new innovations in sound, the war guitar, um, different business concepts, hacking music. Um, you know, it, 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 we've covered so much different stuff, and I've interviewed some great people over my time so far. Now, I've known Ron for a long, long time, and Ron is an incredible man. He goes from seems to go from strength to strength in everything he touches. It's like he's got that Midas touch. But, you know, I wanted to explore Ron because Ron is a guitar player, but he's also an incredibly successful businessman. You know, Ron has, over his years, he's, he's built many companies, floated some on the NASDAQ. He turned one of his most recent companies into one of the biggest out-of-home networks in America with over 100 million views every single month. Um, and he's constantly reinventing himself and trying things. And and I just love that spirit about Ron. Um, you know, we used to hang out together. We, we met originally in Los Angeles when he had bite-sized TV networks. He had this massive TV production facility right on Hollywood Boulevard. And I was really intrigued. This is when I was working with Dave Stewart from the Eurythmics. And he had a show with Ron. And we sort of built this, this, this great sort of camaraderie between us. But look, you know, I, I wanted to interview Ron today because he's got these great, in, uh, great perspectives and great learnings on on business, and it all seems to stem from this this concept of being a music, at least some of it. Um, and so uh, earlier, I recorded Ron, and we went through a bunch of different questions. And look, what he's got to say is amazing, and I hope you get a lot out of it. This is all about trying to provide value to you guys as the audience. Um, anyway, let's get started. Let's hit it. Ron Bloom, Ron, welcome, mate. It's great to see you again. It's been it's been a it's been a minute since I've seen you last. So it's uh, you know you're always blown my mind with some of the amazing things you are doing. I still remember walking down near the W and seeing your big bite sized TV networks building and all the different stuff you're doing. And you know um, yeah, it's always been amazing. So it's great to have you on the show. And thanks so much for your time today. I really really appreciate it. No, man, Raiders of the Lost Art. How, how could I resist? You know, oh, well. Name, like... <laughs> yeah, well. Um, so, so, mate, just before we get started, Reach TV, give me a, give me a rundown. What, what, what are you up to well, now? I kind of sold my, my part of Reach TV. I'm on to something even bigger, but Reach TV. Right, okay. Well, give us an update. Yeah. Um, Reach was, the idea of Reach TV was, and it's probably good for your musical audience, that is, how do you get entertainment in front of people without having to market to the people to find the entertainment. So I built a cloud-based system that I could put entertainment on any screen and a playout system that let me play short form entertainment as linear feed. So in short form, which is interesting, what is the world's, what is the world's most legendary, most economically successful short form entertainment? That's the song. So I took the notion of, of short form video and tried to go back and think of it as, you know, what's the hook? What's the song? What's the bumper? What's the open? What's the close? And I built a linear network out of that that plays 24 seven. Then I needed a place to put it where people already were. Because if I have to go do marketing to grab the person, to turn on the computer, to plug in and to find it, that's, that's a much different investment. So if I could find where people already are, and I could get a third party to tell me I was successful in, in the States. We have this rating company called Nielsen that rates television. So my idea was airports. Airports do in America, the top 60 airports do about uh, 90 million passengers a month and 50% in, 50% out. The guys that are departing spend a lot of time, guess where, in bars and restaurants. And in those bars and restaurants, they have televisions and those televisions usually play crap and the bartender is trying to tune it and no one knows what station it is. And maybe a few guys will play the game. So I built a cloud system that has a, a, a media player that I call uh, a puck, which is branding, which I'll talk about more. So you plug the media player into the back of the television and I, my cloud system tees up content, uh, cues it onto the screen, caches it on the media player and plays it locally. So you never have the spinning hand. And yep. you never have to worry about uh, uh, data transfer, which is yep. a pain in the ass in airports. Yep. And that blew up. Um, I licensed the screens and one third of the screens in the top 90 airports and the top markets in the U.S. and North America, U.S. and Canada. And Reach TV became the fastest growing out of home entertainment network in North America with Nielsen rated 30 plus million viewers a month, which is the size yep. of a good oh, wow. cable system. Um, so that's all part of, you know, my my scheme, which is 
find distribution and reinvent the way things go down that pipe. So that's always been my life. So that's, that's what I'm up to. Yeah. Wow. Amazing, mate. You're, you're, you're always uh, reinventing things and uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's great to see. So um, this episode is round, it's, it's about a concept of the musicpreneur um, and whether you use that term or another term, uh, that term's just being used because it's that trying to identify an intersection between a musician or music and entrepreneurship. And, you know, look, a lot of people will say, oh, look, music has got no correlation. Most musicians have got no idea about business. But and, and that's fine, and and I know musicians like that. But I also know musicians like yourself. You know, you're a musician and you're a businessman. And I just wanted to sort of tease out and see if there is any sort of correlation between that. So I just wanted to ask you, you to start with, um, musicpreneur is is that a term you've ever used, or do you ever do you see a correlation between the two? Well, um, I absolutely see a correlation. If you're an artist, a musical artist, not just a like yourself or hopefully like me, I'm a guitar player. And, you know, you have this in, inner sense of your skill set, no matter whether you're famous, infamous, or never been heard. If you're a real artist, 100% of the day, 100% of the time, somewhere in your mind, that art is percolating. Everything has a beat. Everything has a rhythm. Everything has a sound. If you're in business and you've been a successful artist, or at least a, a one who is well-educated or well-experienced, then you approach business drawing upon the well that you have from being an artist. So what are the what are the things that you can draw upon? For me, it's orchestration. So I think that you orchestrate a business. A business is not linear. A business is dynamic. I think you can own a room if you know how to perform because present, presenting in a business is performing. Yeah. Entrepreneur to me is the ENT could be entertainment preneur because you're basically con constantly showcasing yourself to convince somebody of something. Well, what does a musician do? They perform. So what's your hook? You know, yeah. what's your chorus? What's your, even when we call them, um, even in the world of press releases, we call it a drum beat. You know, what, it's not a release. What's the beat of the press release? So I think it, there's, uh, from a 200,000 foot view, that, that uh, musicpreneur might be misleading and you're thinking of an entrepreneur in music, but the notion of musicians having an ability to be successful in entrepreneurial reach, I think is, is a very positive and believable notion. Yeah, right. Well, and you know, I, I can't agree with you more. I, I remember, at least from my own experience, when I would present some of the tech I was sort of showcasing around the US, you know, it was it was always that live improvised sort of being able to know what my message is, but to read the room and to dynamically sort of, a, and, and that is that performance, right? It's uh, I never really thought about it like that. And I think you, I th you think you've absolutely hit an, a, a nail on the head there. Um, other things that come to mind for me is like resilience, you know, like as an entrepreneur, you've got to, you've got to be, you've got to be strong in your vision. You've got to sort of take the knocks and with music, you don't, you don't just play a G chord and go, oh, I, I didn't do it well. So I give up. Is there any other sort of traits that, that come to mind for you that you think that um, that that sort of cross pollinate each other, or sort of what feeds sure. being an entrepreneur? Well, first, I'll give you a little anecdote. So, um, I was been in music, you know, thirty plus years, and I decided I was going to try something different, and I got involved in this sort of television marketing idea, and it started to take off. And my brother is a um, very successful businessman, and you know, I called him up and I said, you know, this this is pretty good. I started this other business and it started to do pretty good. It's kind of not so hard. And he goes, you, you're missing it. He said, the odds of success in the music are a billion to one and the odds of success in business are a million to one. So you just increase your odds a hundredfold by getting out of music. So that notion of resilience is that, um, as, he, as I think even Elon Musk said, if you just press forward. So musicians, in my opinion, the good ones, they just press forward. They keep creating they're not intimidated. They, you cast away that veil of no one's listening. You try to get off of that negative drumbeat of the world is punishing me or they don't see how creative I am and you just keep creating. So um, I think musicians have an opportunity to be very successful in traditional business if they're willing to approach it with the same passion they approach their music. Yeah. Cool. So on that, you've talked about your, your background. Did what came first? It came for music came first for you, and then you is that is based on that yeah. anecdote? That's what happened. Yeah. yeah I, was playing, I was playing professionally as a guitarist. You can see him back there. Um, at uh, fourteen, and I would probably 
a full-time musician till maybe turning 30 and uh, still play today. Um, still love it. It's, you know, my room is surrounded by it. My office is a recording studio, but I've also had hundreds and if not thousands of employees in 15 different companies. You know, every chance I get, I, I add, and also I found out something really interesting about being a musician is that if you're not one, it's probably been a chapter in your life where you wanted to be one. So everybody can relate to what a musician brings to the table. I know when you and I worked together in LA, I said, here comes the hair guy. And, uh, <laughs> you know, and, 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 and for some reason, and, um, like me, I'm the Mohawk guy, the mogul with the Mohawk, <laughs> but the, uh, but people by being yourself as an artist, you naturally place yourself at the head of the table. So you're the different one in the room. So you can either be negative about it and take that as punishment and consider yourself an outcast. Or you can, as we used to call when I work with Adam Curry, we'd say, here comes a meeting and know it's a little show. Mm -hmm. So you go into a meeting and the meeting is a little show and you take your place. And everything you do is a stage and everything is stage left, stage right. And, and if you're a, that kind of musician who understands what a performance is, you've got to leg up on any other, you're going to become articulate, you're going to be able to have anecdotes about what you are. People are going to be jealous because you can play an instrument. There's all kinds of things you can use to your advantage. Yeah. If you're the psychologically opposite, which is the long suffering musician who has given up on self worth. Well, that's probably not entrepreneurial. Is probably not a role for you. Entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial, entrepreneurialistic people don't worry about self worth. They just mm -hmm. go forward. And, um, the, 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 <clears throat> there was a, a Moore's law about the ability of um, uh, chips to process more dynamically over time. So Moore's law was this thing that drives the chip world from, from uh, Intel, Gordon Moore at Intel. So I created a law called Fart's law. So Fart's law says the likelihood of an innovation succeeding increases exponentially over the number of old farts who refuse to endorse it. So, <laughs> You know, you know this from what you yeah. did, Linnaeus. Yeah. Um, the, the, the more you push, the more you encounter people who don't understand why you're pushing. The musicians understand that, in my opinion, that really yeah. clearly. They're, they're told from birth, why are you doing this? You know? Yeah. Get yeah, no, I, I found it fascinating. Like, I'd, I'd do some important meetings with clients over in the US, and I'd always wanted to have a meeting with someone in a suit who looked normal. And, mm -hmm. and, there was one meeting where I had a meeting with a big studio and my guy who I'd normally have wasn't available. So I got a friend to put his suit on and look normal. And he was like, but I don't know anything about this. And I'm like, yeah, don't worry about it because your job in the theater of what I'm about to do is I'm, I talk as the crazy mad scientist and you're supposed to be the guy who translates me into a business language. And so all you need to do is say, listen, Whatever Finn's saying, we'll get back to you with the uh, with the data on that, and we'll come back to you with some documentation. And that's all you really mm -hmm. have to do. Um, but the theater of that, it was I knew my place, even though I could talk about that stuff. I knew that my image and my presentation was about was be slotted in as the mad scientist because they would understand that. Whereas if I tried to talk business, even though I could, it would be a, more of a challenge to them. You know what I mean? So, but mm -hmm. was that understanding of the theater um, in the meeting was. Quite, is, was an important artifact in actually the success of the meeting, you know, I found. Yeah, that, I mean, that, if you're going back to what can musicians bring to the table. So musicians typically orchestrate, they don't think linearly. It's nothing to them to connect this to this, completely different, makes total sense to them. They understand harmony, they understand discord. And if they're good, if they, you know, if they've written or produced, they understand a theme. Um, getting back to the theme. So there's it's so many natural skills that a musician has that could be applied to business, along with the benefit of being the guy in a room who has that skill. So, so Ron, like you've had companies with like hundreds or thousands of employees or offices all over the place. As someone who is a musician who, through this anecdote, you found out you've got a better chance of success if you actually started a business and you had an idea and you had a vision and you followed that vision, you know, how, how did you sort of adapt and learn um, how to manage that many people and, and still keep them on train with a vision where all of their own sort of ideas are all not getting, you know, it doesn't derail the process. How did you learn that process? Well, 
you know, when I went public, I hadn't really even owned stock. And I found a lot of advice I was given was that people can't, if this could happen, but people don't normally get it done. So I learned to ask the question was, if I want to do this, forget whether it's been done before, but how could it be done? You know, how could it happen? And the, and the lawyer or the financial advisor will go, well, it really is never going to happen. But if you were to try to do it, here's kind of how you would do it. Well, I would just take what they said and I go do it. Um, because a lot of times it's just a combination of the willingness to do it with the thing you're supposed to be willing to do. The hard part is the thing you're supposed to be willing to do. So I learned to ask uh, a question, you know, instead of trying to be the smartest guy in the room, it's just like, how would you do it? And oh, it can't be done. No, but if I constantly go back to, but if we could, if we could get research, um, for example, they would tell me, um, you know, your stock is moving all over the place because you don't have enough institutional investors. And I would say, instead of going, oh, I would go, what's an institutional investor? I mean, that's how naive I was. Oh, well, it's a person who, who, you know, buys a large share of stock, you know, and it's a, it's a group. And okay, well, why can't they buy stock in my company? Because you don't have volume. Well, what's volume, you know? Well, it's the amount of shares traded. So you mean if I can get more volume, I could go, yeah, but that's probably not gonna happen. So I go ask somebody else, how do you get volume? Well, you, you create research. Well, what's research? And you make market. And all of a sudden, this just sounds to me like an or like I'm putting a song together, a little bit of orchestration. Like, okay, I gotta write some research. I gotta submit it, which we used to do with demos all the time. And somebody picks, if I can get somebody to pick up the research, more people will buy the stock, the stock will move, creates volume, and if right after the volume comes, I run out there and I meet these institutional guys, maybe I can convert. That's simple. It sounds simple to me. Try booking gigs and getting signed to a record deal back in the day. It's impossible. So I got some research, I put it out, I got the volume up, and we went from 95% retail shareholders in three months to 95% institutional investors. So that's, to me, an example, just asking. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's 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 interesting. I, I find that you know I, I often talk about a murder wall. You know, like a, being a detective when when they're trying to solve a crime, it's this concept of um, you know putting the different ev evidence pieces on a board and trying to understand what that board's telling you and and looking at the data and what you're saying there is uncovering that research and the artifacts and trying to figure out what the pieces are. You know, I think is um, yeah, it's 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 critical in in business to not just be blind by by focusing on one thing is to, to be able to sort of figure out all these different pieces and i think you know from playing with a you can learn your part but when you play with a band or you play with other artists or stuff like that there's all this other stuff going on that's multi-dimensional you, you know your piece they've got their piece but it's not just about playing your piece it's about playing it in time and and understanding the dynamics so you know i i think that you know i, I don't know why this isn't talked about more but you know people just take for granted as musicians oh yeah you just do that but it's like but there is a whole heap of there's a whole lot of things going on um, that have got multiple dimensions, um, at least I think so, um, and at least when, you know, that ability to be curious. You know, I, I know when I was learning guitar, there wasn't YouTube out there, so you'd be going and slowing down tapes of Malmsteen or whatever and trying to work it out, mm -hmm. listening, and it's that curiosity to be able to try and figure out, well, what is that? And the fact that it doesn't exist doesn't mean it, it doesn't exist. It just means that it, it's not readily available, you know, Um and you hear you hear stuff, right? Yeah. You hear it, and yeah. and then you go in search of it. You don't yeah. get it and then make it. You hear it. Some 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 something is calling you, something. Yeah. And you know, it's just translating that. First of all, willingness to apply your artistry to something else. So there's a subset of musicians that aren't afraid to do that. Willingness to be judged from a commercial perspective. So there's some artists that use commercialism as an excuse to not perform. Um, Will, willingness to try and not get it right the first time and keep going. Remember how it was? We, I mean, what what a great musicians have is this thirst. I still have it, you know, mm. this thirst for that next note, this mm. thirst for that next sound. So I go, I'm I'm constantly thinking about music, and I've got big businesses to pitch and run and develop. But I, is, right now, my head is a little piece of it. I'm sure yours too. Yeah. I'm going, shit, I, I had that guitar you were playing the other day that I could play with instead of talking to you right now. <laughs> yeah, so it's yeah. like, that's what happens. In my mind, part of me is playing with it. Just, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So the trick is to, to gather those resources, those intellectual, psychological resources and apply them to something else. Yeah.
Yeah, and, and that you know the ability to visualize and get to an end point before you've even built anything. You know, I think is, you know, I talk about that to some people and they just think I'm insane. Like, you know, I'll write a track, but I'll know what it's actually going to be fi- like when it's finished before I've even laid a note. I've actually constructed it all in my head. It's the same with the business. You know, I'll go, okay, I need to do this and that and the other. I might not know everything, but I know enough to be able to give me the passion to go, hey, I also know that one of the key things I need to know is that I don't know. You know, and that's a and there are smart people as well as as long as I'm willing to listen um, that are going to come in and you like you were saying you don't know so you ask questions and you you listen and you synthesize that data and you put it together and that's actually quite exciting just that as well you know just that journey of who you might meet like I met you Ryan you know I met met some amazing people around the world and and remain friends you know and so I can travel like you travel to any country and have a bed to stay and stories to tell and to me that's just amazing and that started with just a vision of something that didn't exist it's correct just beautiful I mean this is, think about it product design business plan design storytelling you keep hearing it storytelling a storyteller you know I'm like okay 13 second intro for the DJ to talk over you know, first hook, chorus, first hook, chorus, bridge, chorus out. Don't bore us, get to the chorus, right? So that's how we all started. Then you then you do these amazing, well, wait a minute, what about symphonic and how to be ethereal? And what if it what if we go counter to that organization? But you have the structure that you know will work. Like, you know, for example, much like you, I can play guitar and probably make you feel something. I can make you cry. I can make you nod your head up and down and go rock, you know, yeah. maybe even piano and do it just with four or five notes and then create a theme. So all that power, I mean, being a musical artist is unlimited power. That's why it's so difficult on people shouldering all that power all the time. But it's, but if you apply it, at least in my experience to other things, it can be very rewarding. You have to give up this notion that being doing something in the real world or the non-musical world is something is, is is a loss you know i go into a meeting thinking man i'm so happy I, I was a musician or i am a musician this meeting means shit to me i can take care of it and um, i'm done you know and you also learn what rejection means how many times have we been rejected yeah. so you know um engineers uh, there was a period of time I, I remember when ibm couldn't hire enough engineers, so they were looking for pianists. They thought the pianists would make great software engineers because of their ability to multitask mentally yeah. and left hand, right hand. They thought they could apply that to software development. That's interesting. And you know, then, there's, there's, there's something really, I think that's coming through for me anyway, and I'm sure the audience as well. I think some of this wisdom that you're spitting out here is just like that, Like, and I've never really thought about it like this, but you know, there seems to be this divide. I'm a musician or I'm a businessman. And as you're saying, it's it's all the same thing. It's just, um, and as soon as you can cross that divide in your mind, it's like, well, it's not, oh, I don't understand business, so I'm not a businessman, or I'm just a muso. It's once you can actually cross that bridge and just go, well, what are the patterns that are the same? Um, you actually have this incredible ability and you, this head start because you can, you do know the, the, orchestra, the, the orchestration of the song, the structure. Uh, you do know how to present. You do understand rejection. You don't get too phased by it. These are the, these are really really powerful skills that a lot of people will just fall on their sword. You know, someone rejects them and they all get all flustered and they go, "That's it. No one likes my idea. I'm giving up." You know, it's it's, right. it's really fascinating. Well, there's two there's two categories of, of humanity that I think are very very unique: the artist and the entrepreneur. So. Um, you and I met, it took us all of 30 seconds to connect because we both instantly, you could hear one note and go, okay, I'm, he knows. Yeah. You know, Finn knows I'm good. I know Finn's good. We got that, right? Yeah. Entrepreneur. Yeah. Started your own business. You can always tell when you're talking to another. They're so, we're so surrounded by those two worlds. We, were, we forget that the rest of the world, the 99.9% don't live in those two worlds. Yeah. So we are collectively unique. Artists, I, I'll include musicians and other artists entrepreneurs so it makes sense to me that those two could so musicpreneur if you were to define it and say it's an artist who takes his artistic skills and combine and applies them to an entrepreneurial life that would be a great definition now fear 
things that consume you. Well, one artist lives in fear, another artist lives in hope, another artist lives in dream, another artist, like I say, just moves forward, create, create, create. So do you, do you have to find yourself in, in the artist side or you have to find yourself on the entrepreneurial side? But you know, you'll find benefits. You'll own a room, you'll have like-minded people, you'll re respect, you'll find people like yourself more rapidly if you're willing to just go out and try. Yeah. Well, mate, it's just, um, it's just so amazing. It's so great to see you again. It's, I, I'm just, awesome. I'm just thrilled that you're just continually always, not so surprising, but you're always going from strength to strength. Um, you're such a great person and just, you know, just inspiring to a lot of people and uh, just, you know, thanks so much for having, ha having the time to come on and talk with no, me today. Man. And, you know, I look forward to connecting and trying to do something with you in the future, bud. We're going to do it. And, you know, I know a lot of artists and musicians uh, uh, groove on what you do. You, you're also very, very creative and different. And I think this message, you know, if it helps any artist understand that there is so much power involved in understanding yourself and the arts around you that, that you can put to the rest of the world. And the world needs it. Yeah. It needs more. And one final point, when when I started in the business world, I think it was 90 plus percent of CEOs had a liberal arts education. That's in the wow. 70s, if you will. Yeah, well, big well. And um, if you look today, I think it's 90 plus are legal and engineering. So this world needs more of us because yeah. you, you're seeing the you're seeing the result of that and these vanilla products that come out in this yeah. and in this very predictable blase stuff that hits the market and then you see a really cool person who's got some kind of background come out with something and it takes off it becomes the world so more of that what you're doing don't ever stop creating man you've got it going on so yeah well, thanks bud oh, and, and look just a, a final point for me it's referencing your final point is that the if you look, you can look through things in many different lenses. And when you're telling me things, you know, I'm, I'm instantly going to, wow, that's the competitive advantage that there aren't many people that have that arts degree. And I'm hoping that people listening to this, listening to what you're saying, Ron, actually start to, because you can look at it like, oh, wow, I hope they do more arts in school. Or, you know what, maybe there's more chance for me because I've already developed these skills. So, you know, there are different ways to look at it. And, um, what we're trying to do is inspire all, all you guys to look at it that way. Yeah. And final piece for me is um, some people that I've mentored, I tell them that music has a language, you know, Pythagoras helped invent it. That's how many years ago, but music has a language. Business has a language and any business you're in has its language. It could be tech. It could be media. It could be hospitals. It could be gardening. If you take the time, you already know what a language is. You're a musician. You learn the language you can actually fly to the head of the line and develop and being an entrepreneur just if you take the time to study the business like you have studied your music so that's my final 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 of the uh interview well today. mate you are a total legend um loved having you on it's so great to touch base with you again um look forward to connecting again in the future and i know my audience thanks you and i thank you and big love to the family and talk to you soon bud yeah everybody sends their regards over there from up over to down under, okay? Okay. Take care, buddy. Peace. Thanks, mate. Bye, Cheers.